and welcome here to Talk FCB and welcome back to the channel here today, guys. As upon us is the return of Ernesto Valverde. He is back at the camp now, arriving with his athletic club side this Sunday. It's a big game for us and it's going to be a very tough one. And we're going to be talking all about Valverde, all about the game to come today. Can Barca kick on from their midweek improvement against Villarreal? And specifically, how many of those players that came into the team, that impressed on Thursday, how many of them are going to keep their place? What can we expect from Xavi today? Will there even even be some more changes. It is all coming up for you. It is exciting stuff. So come on and let's do it. Because indeed, on Sunday night, match day 11, the final game of the weekend, Barca will be in action at the camp now once again. And I have to say, in midweek against Villarreal, on a Thursday night, really good crowd inside the stadium. Good atmosphere once again. Getting behind the team. That is what we need right now, and especially here. This is the second of our three successive home games. We've got to take advantage of that home comfort and make it count. Because as you can see here, heading into the weekend in La Liga, Barca are currently still behind Real Madrid there by three points. And as you can see, Athletic Club down there in sixth place. And I am expecting here a more difficult game than we had against Villarreal. This is a good team who've really scored goals this season. And it is all to play for this weekend. Real Madrid will play against Sevilla on Saturday night there. And they will be without the Ballon d'Or winner, Karim Benzema. So no Benzema are there for Real Madrid. That's going to be a testing game for them, perhaps. And on Sunday, it's fourth against fifth as Atletico take on Real Betis there at the Benito Via Marine. To play to play for, and certainly at the top, we must keep the pressure on. But like I say, guys, on Sunday, it will indeed be a special day for Ernesto Valverde, who will return to the camp now for the very first time since he was sacked as the Barcelona coach in January 2020. And this right here is the first opportunity I've really had to talk about Valverde in some detail since that sacking. Now, look, in the years that have passed, I think a lot has happened. It feels like we've been on one roller coaster of a journey there. A lot has been learned in this time, I feel. I think now we can have maybe a bit more perspective. So I'd just like to say here a few words as he does return, because personally now, I can respect the job that he tried to do. I can respect him there as a person. I can also respect that any coach, indeed, who had to work under Bartomeu, at times, they were set up for failure. It was never going to be easy working in those conditions and in his own style, in his own way of playing. I think Valverde, for the majority of the time as Barca coach, he did bring results. He was, of course, the last coach there to win league titles for Barcelona. He secured a number of Clasico victories. And this was a man that won Champions League games with his eyes closed. But I also think we can't forget, you know, we had Messi at the peak of his powers. One of the best versions of Lionel Messi that we've ever seen. That helps. That's going to help any coach indeed. It was a very different Barcelona. It was a very different time. I don't think really we can compare then and now. And I still believe to this day that it was under Valverde that we saw the beginning of that bad mentality seeping into the squad. The cracks began to appear there. And just our standards slipping in terms of preparation, in terms terms of training. But I think here, what we have to say is that Valverde gave us all. He coached the team that he had in the way that he felt best, the way that he felt was necessary to maybe handle the dressing room, to handle the players that he had. And for that and everything that he contributed to this club, I do wish him the best for the future. But just not in this game. Because indeed, for Barcelona and indeed for Xavi, Valverde will know only too well that the stakes are always high. You are always under pressure as the Barcelona coach. And although we saw some improved signs against Villarreal, that was certainly a step in the right direction after the changes in the lineup that we saw from Xavi. But I think the key now, guys, is we don't just want to see that for one game. It's no good there just, you know, doing things and changing things and showing what you can do for one game and then just reverting back to tight. What we have to do here is take notice of what worked for us, the players that came in, the players who impressed, and now back it up. And not just for the league, not just this weekend here on Sunday, but days, of course, now before facing Bayern in the Champions League. We have to keep it going and we have to build momentum here and really show what we can do. 
Because when you are looking at our opponent's athletic here, Valverde this season since returning to the club has certainly brought about some very positive results and indeed plenty of goals in the process. Athletic club there, a sixth in the league, like I say, they have the third best goal scored in La Liga and they are not doing too badly at the back either. Because they are a team who are going to arrive at the camp now playing very much so in this 4-2-3-1 here. You've got the two holding midfielders and attacking ones sort of pushing on the two wide players and indeed a lone striker but you all know the two players in this team that I'm about to highlight because what Barcelona must be wary of on Sunday are the Williams brothers. Iñaki Williams has caused us countless problems in the past year as Barcelona are going to play very high up the field. There's going to be lots of space in behind and you know every time he's going to be on the shoulder. He's going to be waiting for any sort of ball, any sort of slip up there and an avenue in behind our defence. And now we've got Nico Williams on the right hand side who's going to support Iñaki, who's going to make runs in here and that is why in this game for me Xavi must line up with real pace in the team, especially in our our back line, you've got to have players who can deal with threats like these. So indeed, when you are thinking and looking at the potential team that Xavi could line up with this weekend, one thing he did say before this match in his press conference earlier on today, he said... We are going to make changes again. He said there's some fatigue in the squad. There's a few knocks as well. He said, I would like to have more continuity. I think Chaffee openly admitting there that he'd like to play a more regular team, you know, to see consistency in the lineups. But ultimately, it's the fixture schedule right now. It's playing every three days that is demanding change. And he did openly admit that we can expect further changes in this one. So in goal, it is going to be, as we know, Mark andre Ter Stegen that I do feel that one change may come at right back. I think in this game we should see Bearing from the very beginning. He came on against Villarreal for Roberto and I would start him at right back there. I think we need Jules Koundé. Now it might be asking a lot of him. We know that he had the injury that he's just come back from. We don't want to push him too hard but we need that pace. We saw the way that he defended against Villarreal. We need that in this game. Alongside him, I think for Marcos Alonso, I can see Eric Garcia returning in this game and we need him to be on it and without mistakes. At left back despite the good performance that I thought that it was from Jordi Alba I would not be surprised to see Balde back in the starting lineup for this one and that also bodes well there in terms of pace in the back line and dealing with that threat of Nico Williams on the right hand side for Athletic before then in midfield. I think what we absolutely must see and the one position I'm going to be looking at it's that deeper midfield role because obviously Xavi has the option there of bringing Busquets back in but I would say play Frankie. We took him off early against Villarreal. He got a bit of rest there. He can recover in time. We need him in that position against this team right here. Somebody who can cover spaces. Somebody who can transition well. Who can break the lines. We saw all of what he could do. Play Frankie and let him feel the trust by counting on him once again. I think alongside him in a physical game like this. In a game that is certainly going to demand a lot of your team. Why not try out Kessier? I think Gavi there is in need of some rest. He needs to be rotated. And in, you've got to give Kessier some minutes. He didn't even get one single minute against Villarreal. I'm feeling like surely he has to start in this game alongside Pedri, who we need for that creative spark. But even he, he needs some rest as well. So if we are ahead in the game, we didn't see it against Villarreal. But for me, he will need to come off at some point. We will need to see some rotation with him before again we're talking about about the forward line. Now, obviously, it's going to be Robert Lewandowski leading the line. He is somebody who we're going to count on, the Bocici leader in La Liga. But then who's either side of him? That is going to be the big question here because against Villarreal, Ansu Fati was fantastic. Ferran Torres played his part as well. You could definitely make an argument there for leaving it unchanged to play Ansu, Lewandowski and indeed Ferran again. And honestly, I think about doing that. If they're ready to play, I would genuinely think about doing it again because it worked and it worked well. But I just think in this game that Xavi is going to bring at least one of the two back in from Rafinha and Dembele. I would not be surprised to see Dembele on the right hand side. And are we going to see Ansu start again? That's going to be the question as to whether he can, because if he can't, would Xavi line up with Rafinha on the left? That is something for me that we should definitely avoid. And if we can, 
let's keep Ansu there. Because as we are looking at your predictions ahead of this one, guys, if we just go back to what we thought before the Villarreal game, for what the feeling was before that match, and as you can see, there was a lot of scepticism. There was a lot of feeling that maybe things weren't going to go so well for us, that maybe it was going to be a very tight game for Barca. But we overachieved. And now you can see just a little shift in mood. This cautious optimism among Barcelona fans still not going too far overboard. We're still expecting this to be tough. But maybe a win by two plus goals. Maybe here we can follow it up with a much needed boost here. And start to find again some consistency. And I just hope overall here we can see Xavi once again making good decisions for the team. Being brave. Being bold in what he's doing. And just don't stand down. Let's not just revert back now. Let's not forget what was working for us. I understand rotation. I understand here that we need to keep the team fresh. But let's reward those players and let's make sure we got players in there who can work in this game. Please do let me know all of your predictions in the comments down below. How are you feeling? What are you expecting? And what is your score prediction for this one? Let me know as well your expected lineups and I'll be seeing you straight after the game without fail of course to discuss how it all went down. Enjoy your weekend, guys, and I hope you enjoy the game. Thank you, as always, for your tremendous support. I will see you soon. But until next time, as always, Vizca El Barca.